Yes, we can. Okay, great. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see all of you. Um, I'm one of the transplant inpatient PAs, um, physician assistants. There are eight of us, and we basically follow you during your hospitalization and manage your day-to-day -day care, along with the transplant surgeons and hepatologists that so you'll be seeing me, um, mostly with like a mask on, obviously, but um, <laughs> myself and my colleagues every day that you're here. Um, and we look forward to meeting you potentially. So I'm just going to go Hello, through- Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I can't hear you. Um, okay, are you on, am I, can you guys hear, can, Tamara, can you You're hear me? You're unmuted, Mia, yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, great. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just go through a quick summary of the hospitalization that you will be um, that you'll have. And it's just it's a quick summary. It's a lot of information. But um, let me know, please stop me at any time if you have questions. All right. Uh, if you could, Mia, just before you get started, I just wanted to let everyone know um, that I am going to place everyone on mute um, and just allow for uh, you to go along. But of course, towards towards uh, the end, if people have questions, then then they can ask you questions or they can drop them in the chat and then we'll address them towards the end, just to be mindful of time, okay? Okay, perfect. Just let Great. me know if you need me to like speak louder or anything like that. Okay, no problem. <laughs> oh no, Mia, unmute yourself, please. Okay, can you guys hear me now? There we go. Yes, you're good. <laughs> Sorry. Give me moving that. Things. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so donor operation. Basically, timing is critical. Um, so the donor and the recipient, which are all of you potentially are matched on paper, um, the recipient, which is you, will be contacted by the surgeon. You'd be coming to the hospital urgently. Um, you have about three to four hours before you go to the OR. Um, our donor team goes to procure the liver, which means to take it out. Um, our donor team confirms that it's suitable. Sometimes the liver is not suitable for transplant and your surgery could be canceled. Um, and then if it is suitable, you go to the, to the OR. Oh, I see. Sorry, guys. Okay, thank you. Um, so here is basically just a quick picture of the deceased um, donor multi-organ procurement. Um, there's a lot of coordination that happens between like travel time, our donor, our donor surgeons, um, other people that go for this um, case. There's cross clamp with flushing of the organ, cooling and orderly but rapid excision of the organ. Ischemia um, basically just means that the, the organ can be out of the body without having any blood flow to it. Um, so it can be out of a body for up to 12 hours. The average time before a liver transplant is five to six hours. Um, it takes one to two hours for anesthesia prep and two to three hours to remove um, the old liver, which is your cirrhotic liver. Here's a picture of um, a liver. And then a living donor transplant is obviously not a deceased uh, transplant, but it's someone who is giving a portion of their liver and who is alive um, and it's scheduled, meaning that it's been set up by people in the outpatient office. Um, the donor and the recipient usually start around the same time in the morning. Donor is about 30 to 60 minutes before the recipient. Um, and the donor usually finishes around one or two o'clock and the recipient usually finishes in the late afternoon. Um, time out of the body is usually less than one hour. Um, the operation for the recipient is very similar to the deceased donor transplant. And we'll do a quick operation overview. Um, so quickly, 
you will go off to sleep with the anesthesiologist. And while you're asleep, you'll be getting all of these fun things. Um, you'll be getting a catheter in your neck, in your artery in the wrist, a catheter in your leg artery, catheter in your bladder. And you'll, be have, you'll probably have two drains into the abdomen at the end of the surgery. Um, there are about one to two hours for anesthesia to prep you, five to eight hours of the actual operation, and then one hour for transport to the surgical ICU after the, tra after the transplant. Um, here is a quick look of the surgical incision, which is also called a chevron incision. Um, and the operation itself, we disconnect the cirrhotic liver, connect the new veins, the IVC and the hepatic veins, we connect the portal vein, we connect the hepatic artery, then connect the bile duct, and then we look for bleeding and a bile leak. And here's a picture of that um, connection of the IVC. And here's a, an aerial view of what the field looks like Here as well of connecting. Another picture here. And here's the picture of the completed orthotopic liver transplant. Orthotopic just means taking something out and putting it in in exactly the same spot. And you'll see the suture lines there are all of the connections that we have to make for the big vessels um, supplying the blood supply to the liver. And here's a picture of a new liver. Nice and pink, that's what we want. And then liver donor, liver transplant graph. So this is the donor of a um, live donor. And then um, the hospital course. So after the transplant, you'll be in the ICU for likely one to three days, um, about five to 10 days on the transplant floor, which is to north, which is where I am right now. Um, your average length of stay is 10 to 14 days. Um, usually around the first day, you're drinking clear liquids, walking by day two and three, and regular food by day three and four. And you'll have physical therapy, strength building for discharge, and medication teaching throughout your hospital stay by our pharmacist. Um, there are some early complications of liver transplantation that we'll go over quickly. Um, so an early complication that's one of the biggest, but very rare, um, is that the new liver does not work, which is called primary non-function. So that's one in a hundred cases. Um, you would be regaining consciousness, uh, there would be bleeding, acidosis, and it requires an urgent retransplant, but this is very rare. Um, there is also hepatic artery or portal vein thrombosis, which is very rare as well, um, two to five cases in 100. And we um, monitor this by obtaining ultrasounds post-op, um, post intra-op there are ultrasounds, and then also post-op in the ICU and you'll be receiving several routine ultrasounds after your transplant, just to make sure that everything is okay. Um, there's also acute cellular rejection, which can happen. Um, this is when the recipient, this is when you um, reject the new liver and it can happen as early as five to seven days after transplant. Um, you have increased liver tests, which are your liver function tests on your blood work. It's diagnosed by liver biopsy and it's treatable. Um, by increasing your immunosuppression, which is tacrolimus and giving um, pulses of steroids. Early complications of transplant. Um, there are biliary complications, which are one in seven cases. Um, they're slightly higher in living donor transplants um, with leaks, uh, bio leaks and strictures that potentially happen. But over 75% of these cases are managed without surgery, uh, meaning with an ERCP, which some of you may have had in the past. Um, and there are other complications. Bleeding is one of them, up to 10% of transplants. Sometimes that requires a reoperation, um, infection, bacterial, uh, which are treated with antibiotics, viral infections, such as CMV, which is cytomegalovirus, or hepatitis C recurrence. Um, for the wound, sometimes there are infections of the wound. Sometimes we have to reopen the wound. Um, sometimes there is leaking of ascites, which is managed with diuretics. Um, 
renal insufficiency from like a multitude of reasons, medications, infection, um, cardiac arrhythmia can, can happen, um, especially if you have a history of that from before the transplant. And then pulmonary wise, um, patients develop pneumonia sometimes if, they're, if you're on the vent for an extended period of time and can develop fluid around your lung, which is um, also managed by diuretics and sometimes a tube if needed or um, a needle to drain that fluid. Um, so in conclusion, liver transplant is a complex procedure. Um, there are surgeons, hepatologists, PAs, pharmacists, ICU doctors, ID doctors, nurses, psychiatrists, and social workers who are all a part of your care team because um, we need all of those people to take care of uh, the transplant patient. And we are behind you to make sure you get the very best care. And there's a picture of here, I believe, the Columbia group. And the one on the right here is the Cornell group, which is the group that I'm from.